a time came in my life when I started having visions and encounters. And Jesus told me, he said, what he's preaching is the message of Paul. One thing I've noticed is that it seems to be like with his person, every year, there seems to always be a trend about him. This year, I think is one of the best I've seen so far. Now, in my findings about this trend, in total, I've seen three videos. Please correct me if I'm wrong. One was at his church where he started the whole thing. The other one was in Ghana. And the next one again in his church when he came to re-emphasize what he said and said that he is not backing down and all that. But what he said, he stands by it because it's trending. So at least you all know that this is a trending conversation. So before we get to the person of Johnson Suleiman, this is something that is not new. When it was with Joshua Salman, I don't know what is really wrong with you people. I didn't hear people really complain because it was Joshua Salman. Why are you dragging Johnson Suleiman this time around? And I've come to a point where I don't give God. If God says stay in Zaria forever, I stay in Zaria forever. I honor great men of God like Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Look at the place. Look at the kind of anointing that man of God has. And look at where he is. Look at where his international headquarters is. There are some decisions people take. When you look, you know God spoke to them. The devil will never come and tell you that kind of decision. Even you, you know it's God that spoke. Jo Once upon a time, Joshua Sermon said that even Apostle Paul, yeah, the same Apostle Paul that they are giving water water today, actually appeared to him, visited him. But before he made that statement, he talked about those whom you call generals. Now note, please, my dear friend, before I play this particular audio for you, I do not believe that anybody is God's general. That particular term itself is a very carnal term. So he talked about those you call generals coming to appear to him or visit him and telling him of how they failed in their generation. And in the same breath while he was saying that, he talked about Paul. Apostle Paul, you know, yes, visiting him. Please listen to the audio. One time, I started having encounters with the saints of old. Now, understand that every time we teach these things, the Bible is the foundational pattern for our spiritual growth. When we share these supernatural experiences, it's not to create a passion in you higher than your love for Scripture. Are we together now? These are only systems that support the things that Scripture has said. I remember I started having encounters with many of those you call the generals. And they would come to me and share mysteries. And some of them would share with me where they failed in their own generation. I remember in one of these encounters, a middle height man came to me and after talking, the light that beamed from him and when we were done talking, he turned and he was on his way going. And I looked at him and I said, you did not tell me your name, sir. And he looks at me and turns back and smiles. And he said, Paul. And he turned and walked away. I am a product of many anointings. I am a product of many encounters. Years ago, I started searching for those who carried the mantle of the generals because I felt that there was a burden upon my life for this generation. And I wanted to become a system of preservation and continuity of the program of God. Well, I, I hope you took your time to listen to that. So that can be a premise because I don't know if Joshua Sermon saying that many things of which Apostle Paul said in the scriptures are wrong or were wrong is as a result of what Paul himself told him. Are you following me now? I will tell you why I'm saying this. I hope you know. <laughs> Help us, Lord. Thank God. This is Koinonia. I hope you know that there are many things that Paul said in the Bible that are wrong according to the character of God's word. Hallelujah. Paul was a man 
like every other man. This is where I'm driving to. There are many people who have taken just anything. How many of us have had that same? If it's in the Bible, I will do it. I'll never show you the scripture, but I can I can show you a place in, in the Bible where Paul permits a woman to sleep with a man. Is Paul Jesus Christ? I hope you know that Paul was also judged and will also be judged. Jesus Christ is the perfect theology. Are you following me now? Whether it's Paul or Apollos or Joshua Selman or E and I, I'm saying all of us are subject to the integrity of God's word, the principles of the kingdom that are contained in that word. Now, even though he hasn't told you or he didn't to tell you, and of course, with the way that video itself went viral, probably those who are in the koinonia, you people, I know, you people are already dragging me in the comment section. You are already doing, ah, Antichrist, this and this. If you are dragging me or if you are calling me names because I am against that which your father has said, and he's not really pointed it out or made clear so that probably the body of Christ who know him to be a custodian of many anointings and have drunk of many graces and like he will put it himself, listen. This man that stands before you is a product of many anointings. Many anointings. Many anointings. Many anointings. I heard about Charles and Francis Hunter. You've heard my story. The, the evangelist, in a single meeting, they raised 100 wheelchairs. 100! I said, no, this is, I have to meet them. I desire to travel to U.S. Not to go for a sermon, to scrub their toilets for two weeks. As a man of God. Adaptation is proof of honor. Can you bend that far to receive the grace? Praise the Lord. And then the ultimate of all the revelations was when the Lord Jesus himself appeared to me. Yeah, so he's a combination of everything possible to really carry the unction to the next level. Then probably he should be the another apostle Paul of this particular generation. I am guessing so. But of course that would be a blatant lie because I don't see any of the apostles, no matter who, it is that it has the title of apostle to be in the same cadre as the apostles of the Lamb. I'm not saying that the office or would I say that particular missionary apostle, church planter, saint one do not exist. Okay. But so those who understand what I'm talking about, you will get there in probably a future video where I look at this in depth using the Bible. But in this particular conversation here, we are looking at the present apostles now, quote and unquote, looking at Apostle Paul of the Bible who wrote almost half of the New Testament you are holding on to now or the reason why you are even you know a professing Christian because he is more of like quote and unquote the apostle to the Gentiles you are a Gentile my dear friend do you understand what I'm saying right here when I look at these things happening I smile within me one if if Joshua Selman could not be questioned when he said what he said, which of course he still stands by, and I haven't seen probably a contrary statement of either correcting or being clear on the things you said that Apostle Paul was wrong in. With the things you see, leaders of the Christian community, this is not just happening in Africa. Sometimes I see it also happen in the West. Later, we'll also talk about things happening in the West because some of you, your minds are closed to your African apostle, pastors, and whatever, which is mostly my audience anyway on what how do you now expect those who are outside the faith to be seeing <laughs> your faith when we have now gone beyond pastors maybe probably attacking each other on you know little grounds here and there that like we have looked at before to now attacking the scriptures itself it's one thing to disagree with someone based on doctrine but it's another thing as well for you to be questioning the authority of scripture itself to a great extent. Yes, that's why I agree with him on the point where he talks about this. You know that every Christian sect today uses the Bible to practice whatever they are doing. The Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it preach any message. Are you listening to me? I can take a scripture 
and the daughters of Lot slept with them. That can be my message. Is it in your Bible? Are you, are you getting blessed? I can take it and twist it, arrange it nicely, package it for anybody's selfish desire. I can just use the scripture and they gave. And then I stopped here. I say, I'm going to expound on that scripture and they gave. Because it came out of the Bible. So I am saying that the Holy Spirit must help us to understand that scattered in these scriptures we call the Bible are the statements of Satan, God, false prophets, true prophets, all kinds of things. The Holy Spirit, that's why when you study your Bible without the Holy Spirit, you can never get blessed. So many people choose the Holy Spirit and leave the Bible or say, let's take the Bible and leave the Holy Spirit. No, no. So when the Bible says all scripture was inspired by the Holy Spirit, what he's trying to say is that the Holy Spirit made everything. Are you listening to me? He made the people to write all of these details. But you can't sit down and start claiming and say, and Lot, and um, the daughters of Lot slept with him, and they slept with him, and meditating on the word. What is the meaning of that? Of course, and I've said this here many times, the scriptures itself can be used to manipulate, to preach anything. So now, seeing what Joshua Seman himself has said, in the past, note, Joshua Seman has claimed that he has seen Jesus in how many times? Even Johnson Suleiman himself has claimed that he has seen Jesus. And let's look at the statements here of what he said in the faith video. So he said, after talking about his friend's story, he said, I locked my door. I took days and began to pray and Jesus told me. Even Paul talks about, if you have watched my last video, yeah, I was looking at um, spiritual fatherhood before you call someone your spiritual father. You know this? If you haven't watched that video, you saw the point where Paul was talking about those who are preaching a different Jesus. So, indeed, there are people that preach a different Jesus. But let's assume it's your Jesus here. Okay? Jesus would not get to even contradict scripture. Let's go on. What he is preaching is the revelations of Paul. Check what I did. I casted out demons. I casted out evil spirits. Even Peter warned you to be careful of the letters of Paul. Second Peter 3.16 My dear friends, if you go home, sit down. I know you have watched many videos on this subject. Later I'll play the ones of... Uh, I'll look at what Pastor Kumuyi said and many other pastors as well, if I have the time. But you, go home. I can. What can I even teach you? Some of you have seen me as your demon. Go home, sit down and study Second Peter. It's even more of like the ending of the scripture. Study the entire chapter itself. Get to the point where Peter talks about the person of Paul. That was not in any way being like Paul himself or what Paul was teaching was. It, it was looking at the idea that people who do not even... Because even at that time, Paul's writings were almost being regarded as very important when it comes to scripture. Even at that time. Yes, of course. So... Paul's writing, he was trying to make you understand that even in it being difficult to understand, people were at that time even twisting it. Like you will see today, people twisting the words of Paul in order to achieve whatever means of whatever they want to achieve. So saying that, that, that was the revelations of Paul. The question now is, the revelation of Paul is of his own or is it of God? You have to now go back to Galatians 1. Let me, before I get to go on here, let me read something for you in Galatians uh, 1, verse 11 to 12, okay? Paul's message comes from Christ. Verse 11, Dear brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that the gospel message I preach is not based on human reasoning. If you have watched me over time, I use human reasoning to decipher the, the schemes and the gimmicks of your idols. I, know, I don't speak without evidence. Proof, they eat plenty. Because they use human reasoning, knowing that you are already spiritually hyped in your understanding of their persona to see everything to be a spiritual <laughs> occurrence. And that's how come they will fake miracle money for you and also fake credit score miracle for you. And those are classic examples you cannot deny. The examples are here. Iboku, boku. I received my message from no human source and no one taught me. Think about that. Instead, I received it directly. Instead, I received it by direct revelation from Jesus Christ. So ask yourself a question. Now, 
I know with the whole new apostolic reformation happening in the U.S., we'll talk about that much later. I've mentioned it before, but I've not really had time to look at it. I don't really get time like that. So I could tell on a true true. Let me make you see now. I'm slacking behind on conversation because one well, other busy. Your table. Which are saying that is Paul was talking about his own revelation, and the same Jesus appeared to you and told you that Paul was preaching his own revelation. And the Bible is telling you that, Paul is telling you that his own re revelation is not from human reasoning. It's not from someone teaching him. Rather, it's a direct revelation from Jesus. Do you even know Paul? Do you know Jesus more than what, how Paul knew Jesus? But again, all the apostles today, name many of them, many of them have claimed that this, Jesus visited them. You were not there. You have to just believe them based on whatever but that is a different discussion for another day i'll leave it now hmm? i don't i'll not question your application clinical let's leave it that for now but let me go on here so that's just number one jesus says do what i did not what paul said so he's now saying jesus told him do what i did not what paul said i'm quoting him directly i'm not missing what i had to write it down because i know how they operate if i make the video and play the video for you they will come and claim it and say copyright. So when I saw this, I was I was just wondering to myself, probably all of you watching who are probably followers of Johnson Suleiman or followers of um, Joshua Suleiman should stick to the synopt synoptic gospels and leave out half of the New Testament. But I just noticed that you people still preach from those particular scriptures or those particular letters of Paul. And I wonder why do you do so? Maybe what will happen is that you people can have a meeting. Last time was Takim begging that Joshua Selman should please bring out those errors so that he can help the body of Christ to understand which one <laughs> which one is wrong so that they can squash it. But anyway, but the last video where he gets to double down after saying his son, sons of the prophet or something, we spoke to him about it. He made a couple of statements which I noted down. Uh he said, I say something which I stand by. Interesting. The Lord told me you are preaching. So he said, the Lord told me you are preaching Paul. You are not preaching me. He said, the Lord told me you are preaching Paul. You are not preaching me. Think about that as well for a moment. God told me the teaching of Paul are not from the lips of Jesus. So now, he has moved from Jesus appearing to him. Now, he's now, look, he's now looking at the triune God right now. So he's saying, God... You know, Jesus is God. And let me assume now he's talking about God the Father, the person of the Father. And I was now wondering too, how would Paul be talking about the revelation of Jesus Christ, not the revelation of himself? And then God is telling you that the teaching of Paul are not the, from the lips of Jesus. They are, he said, they are the revelation of Christ that Paul had. But Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the things Jesus said and did. Let's, let's, let's take for example here. Look at our last conversation about the subject of father. Aha. Uh -huh. Classic example. Jesus says specifically in Matthew 23, Call no man on earth father. Call no man father. Whether you like it or not, either of the people I'm talking about in this video are your spiritual father. Now, if you didn't understand the context of my discussion or what Jesus was saying right there, discard the thing that came from Paul's lips, even talking about the fivefold ministry. I wonder why you are a father. Why Johnson Suleiman last two years would say, A father cannot, you don't correct a father. Correction upward is rebellion. Correction upward, you don't correct a father. A father cannot be wrong. A father can be wrong before God, but before you, a father cannot be wrong. He was celebrating his anniversary or something. Forgive me if I'm not correct with the date. And then he invited his father, Pastor E.R.W. That is actually the reason why in my subject of discussing spiritual fatherhood, I had to just go to the top. Let me start from the top because everything that is happening in the African church waters down from the top. Whether you like it or not. He said here, a few things happened and he could not be there for the program. I went to him with a seed of the program that he did not attend. A father cannot be wrong. He's talking about the fact that he invited Pastor Yadibuye for some, 
circumstances, he could not attend his anniversary. But he went to him with the seed of that particular program. He now said here, you don't correct a father. Correction upward is rebellion. A father can be wrong before God, but before you, a father can never be wrong. These are his words here. For those of you who might be wondering where is the video is, I'm lying, I'm speaking gibberish. You dare not. I even heard Apostle Joshua Sermon say this. Anybody who God exposes an opportunity for transformation, for repentance and change, and he plays with God in God's intelligence, there is a system already within the economy of God where judgment is meted upon stubborn hearts. Leave that to God. It is his business. As a man of God, you will never hear me open my mouth to criticize a church, to criticize another man of God, and far be it from me to criticize the fathers of faith. There are fathers, no matter what they do, your own is to pray. Their age and their track record has shut your mouth forever. The only person who can really talk to them is God. They dare not, in their right senses, correct the fathers, I mean those you know, those I know. You see, when I talk about relevance by association, somebody will wake up from the left side of his bed and say, oh, it's not by relevance by association. It is by the Spirit connecting and then you are imparting. Okay. Okay, Apostle Paul, yeah, it's not here to correct. It's not here to answer you. Um, maybe Joshua Selman knows better what he looks like because he has met Apostle Paul before. Uh, Johnson Suleiman knows Jesus better. I don't know Jesus like he does. I will say hallelujah. Oh, this is not a Johnson Suleiman attacking Paul. This is Johnson Suleiman saying what God told him. I said Paul learned based on what he was told. He was not there. So I will focus on what Jesus said more than what Paul said. I will focus on what Jesus said more than what Paul said. In the subject of even spiritual fatherhood, if you are focusing, I'm giving that as an example because I discussed about this subject recently. If I'm using that as an example itself, none of you who call yourself fathers exist, should even exist. Yes, of course, because Jesus himself said that emphatically. But for you to really understand the church, you see, the foundation of the church itself was built on the apostles and the prophets. Not about, no, no, there cannot be any two foundations, three foundations. So don't, whether you are apostle, this or whatever, I don't care. You don't go beyond the revelations of scripture. You cannot add to it. The canon itself has been closed. And I hate when people try to make themselves uh, 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 the Spirit of God is upon me. You are preaching someone and turning the Word of God upside down so that people will be clapping hands for you and telling this pastor is a spiritual man of God. Look at what he's preaching. He's preaching the truth. Oh God, you are preaching with animal sense. So no matter what is going to juxtapose, if it does not agree with the message of scripture you are making noise for you to really understand the church in itself you have to look at number one what did jesus say and do for you to establish doctrine what did jesus himself say what did jesus himself do what did the early church himself practice then you can really establish something as a doctrine that's what i believe in you don't have to believe in what i believe in okay I know that some of you always come and ask me, eh, you, you, which church do you go? You, 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 because if I say I'm going to this church, you're already, you're already trying to theologically put me in a box. But if you're a student of the Word of God, if you're a student of the Bible, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know whether it's Holy Spirit you have or you have a, or Goya oil you have on your head. For some of you, it's as if your head is not working. When I look at this here and say, is it, I will focus on what Jesus said more than what paul said so not as if he's not going to take what paul said he's saying i'll focus on what jesus said more than what paul said probably we should get examples of what jesus said that is probably against because against what paul said or something because if paul's except probably you don't believe that the revelations of paul like you see in the letters are not that of jesus probably you might have a conversation over that if you read the scriptures well paul's meeting or the time he spent with peter and the other apostles for 15 days 
wasn't for him to go and learn and know about Jesus, whom he had encountered the reason form of him. Let's read let's read that Gal let's read down Galatians so you really understand you really understand Paul's visit with the apostles. So moving on right here, you know what so verse 13. You know what I was like when I followed the Jewish religion. How I violently persecuted God's church. I did my best to destroy it. I was far ahead of my fellow Jews in my zeal for the traditions of my ancestors. But even before I was born, God chose me and called me by his marvelous grace. Then it pleased him to reveal his son to me. God that told Johnson Suleiman that, you know, that what Paul was saying was not from the lips of Jesus, but from Paul's own lips. Moving on right here. When this happened, okay, 16, to reveal his son to me so that I will proclaim the good news about Jesus to the Gentiles. When this happened, I did not rush out to consult with any human being, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to consult with those who were apostles before I was. Instead, I went away into Arabia and later I returned to the city of Damascus. He had a revelation of Jesus. He did not go to go and consult those who were <laughs> the real, those who walked and lived with him in life, those who walked and lived with him. But what did he do? Moving on right here. Then three years later, after three years, so after no, to three years later, I went to Jerusalem to get to know Peter, and I stayed with him for fifteen days. The only other apostle I met. That time was James, the Lord's brother. I declare before God that what I am writing to you is not a lie. Why would he be writing this particular letter to the Galatians? I don't want to go into all of those stuff. After that visit, I went not into the provinces of Syria and Sicilia, and still the Christians in the churches in Judea didn't know me personally. All they knew was that people were saying the one who used to persecute us is now preaching the very faith he tried to destroy. And they praise God because of me. But look at what happens 14 years later. 14 years later, after he spent 15 days with Peter, getting to know Peter, he was already in ministry, but just for him to be in alignment. The thing is that we just need to, because from that particular first video, it looked as if Paul didn't cast out, maybe, if that was what he was trying to insinuate, that Paul didn't cast out devils. But... Paul actually did. Yes, of course. You can see the scriptures right here on your screen. So, what is really, really the bone of contention right here? Except there's something else really wrong. Chapter 2 right here. Then, 14 years later, I went back to Jerusalem again. This time with Barnabas and Titus. And Titus came along too. I went there because God revealed to me that I should go. While I was there, I met privately with those considered to be leaders of the church and shared with them the message I had been preaching to the Gentile. He shared with them what he had been preaching, what God called him to. I wanted, why? I wanted to make sure that we were in agreement for fear that all my efforts had been wasted and I was running the race for nothing. And they supported me and did not even demand that my companion Titus be circumcised, though he was a gentile. Do you, do you see the reason why Paul actually went there? And why would Paul say this as well here? If you read 2 Timothy 4 from verse 6 to 7, if you read 2 Timothy 4 verse 6 to 7, you get to see, ask yourself, for those of you who are probably men of God watching this video, watching George talking, talking, say, oh, what is this, what is this, what? Would you be able to say this about yourself in the end? The time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have remained faithful, and now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous just, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. If it does not say that many things that Paul wrote were wrong, probably we need some education because I'm willing to learn. I'm a student every day. I don't know. Would I say I know more than your apostles? No. They are the ones that I me. Mean, do I have an audience? I'm here making analysis and then I move on. When I look at them, I say, oh, wow. 
10,000 people are following me. Oh, this video, 10,000 people are watching. Wait a minute, who are those people watching? Who are, the, who are those watching my videos? The point I'm trying to make right here is that if Paul could say this about himself, he has, he has kept the faith. Probably these apparitions of people seeing Paul and Paul probably telling them some things. We need to hear them. Those are me, I know, say so I will not believe you. The canon itself has been closed. You cannot add to it. Again, you might have to go back to discussing about the canon itself. But again, this right here is just shaking the foundation of the faith. And those who are outside the faith are just looking and smiling and laughing. Because some of these arguments that we get to bring, even in Christianity, is what people who are out of the faith get to use to make arguments and say that Christianity itself is whatever. And I would understand. Just to look further what Johnson Suleiman said, he said, Even Peter was advising you about what Paul said. What Jesus said is priority, what Paul said is secondary. Paul was preaching his revelation of Jesus. It was not Jesus that was talking. It was Paul writing those letters. Would you then disobey your own spiritual father or your own pastor over what Jesus himself said? Think about that. Because every pastor would expect that their followers would do what they want them to do. What he wants them to do. But you that is a follower, would you dare disobey or go against the teachings of your pastor? All these things you people are doing. They are looking for Paul's trouble. Uh, on resurrection, they will not go answer them. But let me read this particular verse as well for you guys. Okay, let's go to Revelation. Uh, we are going to discuss about this later when I look at uh, when I look at the subject of are there apostles today? Do they exist or something? We just discuss that. Balance it with scripture. Balance it. Me, I love scriptures a whole lot, but this is not who I want to be on the internet. God knows it. Some of us run away. <laughs> we run away. When they say, hey, 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 George, become a... Okay, let me know. If I talk now, some of you will know where. You will know my background too well. I don't like... I, this channel is not really all about George, George, George. But... Back in the day, you know, you know, sometimes I, some of my mates back in the day always watch me and say, Hey, John, hey, you, this thing you ran away from, you are coming back to it. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm not a person, please don't ever look at me like that. See me as that canal, uh, useless analysis. See me like that. I like it like that. So far as you always come and watch me, that's very important. Let me be that fool because it's from, it's, it's, it's foolishness. To those who, you know, it's foolishness sometimes when I say what I say. So far as you are listening, that's more correct. Very wonderful. When you look at the message to the church in Ephesus, listen to this here in Revelations. So I'm not surprised. Write this letter to the angel of a church in Ephesus. This is the message from the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand. The one who walks among the seven gold lampstands. I know all the things you do. I have seen your hard work and patient endurance. I know you don't tolerate evil people. You have examined the claims of those who say they are apostles but are not. You have discovered they are liars. You have patiently suffered for me without quitting. To the next video. There's a difference between the gift of apostleship and the office of an apostle. But we talk about it again next time. The point I'm trying to make right here is that even those of us who are your apostles that come and make claims, some of their claims are lies, if not everything. 